If you look all the way to the left, you'll see the antenna and the antenna coil. This RF energy gets magnetically coupled to the secondary, and we're going to be seeing this a lot. And in the secondary, you'll notice that there is a variable capacitor, and all this energy gets magnetically coupled to the next coil, and you'll see that there is another variable capacitor. And then this tuned circuit goes to the control grid of the first 24. Now, if you take a look at the dotted lines on those first two variable capacitors, you'll notice that it goes up and over and down to a couple of more uh, variable capacitors. And what that means is all four of these capacitors move together. Now the second grid in that 24, the one that's closest to the plate, that's just being held positive. There's no signal on it. There's just a positive voltage on there. And that makes the 24 tube uh, perform better. Now the signal that's on the grid of this tube gets amplified and it goes to another primary. It gets transferred to the secondary and this amplified signal is on the control grid of the next 24. But some of it also goes down to another coil and I want to point out something here. This is an interesting circuit the way they've got this set up. If you take a look at the cathode of the 24 and the 27, they are connected together and they share a capacitor and a resistor to ground. Now the 27 is the oscillator and this connection of the cathodes together is how the oscillator signal is applied to the 24. So now we've got the oscillator signal on the cathode and we got the RF on the grid of that second 24. And now they get mixed together and now we have an IF frequency of 175. That's what the primary and capacitor are tuned to in this radio, 175 kilohertz. This is what the carrier looks like. The red part is the carrier, the 175 kilohertz, and it is varying in amplitude. And that is where the audio information is. Now this gets magnetically coupled again, goes to the grid of the next 24 tube, it amplifies it, and here we've got a switch, or they're showing just using part of it here. But if we had the switch in the other direction, more energy would be coupled to the secondary. The energy in the secondary again goes to the grid of the next 24 tube and gets amplified again, and another tuned circuit which sharpens 175 kilohertz again. This is what we've got. We've still got our carrier and it's varying. And I drew a line through the center of this because we do have a positive and negative half. And the lines are showing that if you take a look at where it varies on the positive side and take a look at the negative side, they add up to zero or in other words, the audio information adds up to zero. And this next part of the circuit is going to detect the audio. That 27 tube, if you take a look at the cathode and plate, you'll notice that they are connected together. The plate is not really being used here. It's just being held at the same potential as the cathode. The rectification is done between the cathode and the control grid. Now, that cathode 
And it goes through a resistor and you follow it on down. It goes to ground. If you take a look at the bottom of coil 29, what we have here now is this, half of the audio. And now it does not add up to zero. And they could have taken the positive half, but later on we're going to find out that uh, taking the negative half has an advantage. So now this signal goes down and over to the right, up through resistor 35, and then onto the control grid of the next 27. Now, let's back up a little bit and go to capacitor 30. It's a 110 picofarad capacitor. Right there, they're starting to pick off the IF frequency, that 175 kilohertz. That'll pass through that capacitor with no problem at all. It goes over to capacitor 34 to ground. Now if you follow that coil 29 down again, then over to the right, up through 35, resistor 35, and then we run into capacitor 36. It's a 250 picofarad capacitor. That gets rid of the rest of the 175 kHz carrier, and what we're left with now is just the audio. The 27 tube amplifies this audio. It goes through capacitor 40, through the volume control to the grid of the next 27, which amplifies it, goes through an audio transformer, and the secondary is center tapped, so we have a push-pull set up here. In other words, each end of that secondary is 180 degrees out of phase, which drives the grid of the next two 47 tubes, or the audio output tubes, and now we have enough energy to drive a speaker. Okay, that's the signal flow through this radio. But there's one more thing that I want to show you. If you go back to the bottom of transformer 29, there's a lead that goes to the left. And it goes through a resistor and to capacitor 9, which is a dot zero five microfarad capacitor. This is storing negative voltage. Now this is not a signal, it is a negative bias voltage. The stronger the station is, the more negative voltage. And look where that negative voltage goes. It goes up to the control grid of the first 24 tube. So a strong station will produce more negative voltage, which makes the 24 tube conduct less. And if we have a weak station, there'll be a lot less negative voltage, so the 24 tube will conduct more. And that is the automatic volume control for this radio. Thanks for watching.